How's it going, Peng Pirates crew? It's Adrian here, and we're back with another video. So the month of May is going to be really exciting because we're getting back into that Treasure Cup season. And for me, I've been having a lot of trouble finding what deck I want to play. I feel like a lot of the options that we have right now all have the chance to just top at the tournament. So to combat this, we are going to be going over all the different matchups and potentially what are good matchups into the meta, what are some bad matchups, what are some decks that counteract these things. And to do this, we're going to be looking at some charts on Twitter from Jeff Ruberg. I just wanted to say thank you so much, Jeff, for letting us use your charts. He is doing honestly amazing work. He basically took the Montreal regionals as well as the pro play game online regionals and just compiled a bunch of matchup data for us to look at, which is an amazing resource for us. So again, thank you for the community and also thank you for giving us permission to use these charts. He also has a really cool Digimon podcast to follow and I'll be putting his Twitter down below. So go ahead and check it out. So looking at the Montreal regional, we could see that right now, the most popular deck is going to be Whitebeard, which is super interesting because I feel like this deck had a very explosive rise after the top cut regionals. And then after seeing it top at Illinois, you know, shout outs to Will the Wind Gaming with the Moby Dick version, I feel like we're gonna see a lot, kind of half and half of Strawbeard and Moby Dick. Both of them are have proven to be like tournament ready. But looking at the chart, we see that Kinemon is a very favored matchup into Whitebeard. And I think this is true for both Moby Dick and Strawbeard, just because Green loves to be controlling the board. But the problem with that is most of Green's removal is just resting your characters and swinging into them, which is really good for Whitebeard because one, their cards are just big guys. Like you're gonna be swinging at minimum 6K, 5K for things like Moby Dick. But like the other cards like Ace, like King Dude, they're gonna be swinging at 7K. It's just really difficult for Green to deal with big bodies. And then, you know, while Kinemon is trying to deal with your bodies, you're just swinging at his face. So he's just slowly dying until you just swing into for game. And it's really hard for them to come back from that unless they have something like Odin, unless they draw like pretty much perfectly. So if you're anticipating a lot of Kinemon, you know, Whitebeard is an amazing deck to play. And then a result that I was really surprised with is that during this regional, Whitebeard was actually unfavored against Zoro by a significant amount. And I think this is because, you know, partly because Strawbeard and Moby Dick were put into just one category as Whitebeard. But to be honest, like, that doesn't really matter because I feel like they're going to be equally popular between the two decks after the Illinois top. And this might be a thing where the meta is kind of adapting or Zoro players are kind of adapting to better understand this matchup because you can't just swing out with, like, all of your chumpy cards and board. That takes too much time and too much dawn. But like they're starting to, you know, throw out the Zoros, throw out the Nico Robins for more control. And Whitebeard ends up being such a linear deck. If you pop their board and control it, it's actually a lot easier to deal with. Especially for a deck like Zoro where, you know, they have to deal with a Nico Robin or they have to deal with a Zoro because it's always going to be swinging 6k into their face. And if they don't address the board, you're just going to end up taking away the game. And I feel like, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see this unfold in the treasure cups because both of these decks are going to be played a lot more so we'll see how this ends up turning out but maybe it was a fluke maybe there was like some player thing going on or some you know moby dick players not drawing into the stage that caused it to really lower but yeah it's i just thought it was really interesting and then another surprising result of this tournament was Whitebeard was actually favored against Smoker, and this is another matchup where, you know, in theory, Smoker should win. You should be able to pop a lot of things on their board, considering they're like five and four costs. So, you, you know, you could Sakazuki them, you could reduce their cost and Kobe them, you know, some Smoker players are running Garp nowadays. But now I feel like this is where we need to step out of the theoretical, right? And look at it in practice. And in practice, Smoker is just too inconsistent to, you know, be a Garp Slayer because you have to draw into two components of your game. You know, you have to draw into the cost reduction and you also have to draw into your pops, right? So then sometimes you could just get rushed down, honestly, and it, it's a brutal matchup at times because you could pop their things on curve, but they still have cards that like rush Luffy and rush Ace, and then they're at 6K, so they're swinging at you. So you'll have to give them way more cards. They can just race you down to zero life before you could even control their board a lot. So I feel like in practice, like this deck is not good into it. 
especially for longer tournaments like this, right? Because you might have like a three round hot streak at locals with this deck for sure. But in practice, like when you have nine rounds, you need a consistent deck to, you know, do well in this tournament, especially for players that are only going to get better and better as you win more matches. So it ends up being really, really tough sometimes because if you just don't see the right cards as Smoker, you are just going to get rushed down and die most of the time. And we'll talk more about that later when once we get to the Smoker matchups. But yeah, this was very surprising because everyone kind of says, yeah, Smoker beats Whitebeard because of the board control. And in theory, again, that's true. But in practice, you know, we don't see that. It's actually a pretty favorable matchup for Whitebeard. And I'm not going to spend too much time on the Whitebeard versus Law matchup. I feel like that makes a lot of sense. Because Law is at a 4 life leader, even if you're playing something like Moby Dick, it's really hard for Law to keep up in life especially against Strawbeard, right? Because they're going to be countering a lot early game and Law is just known for swinging, you know, 5k and 6k. I know Michael E or like Cross AI, he had the really cool, you know, restand laws in his deck. He had four of them, which can really help, but it takes a lot of finesse to do these things. And it takes even more finesse to control the board as the Law player. And I just feel like once that nine drop is out for Strawbeard, like it's just a done deal. And even into Moby Dick, right? Like it's very hard for Law to keep up because you could just keep swinging face. And even if you're only swinging 7k per turn, Law has to deal with that some way, right? Because being a four life leader means that they're just, they just can't eat damage and 7k's every single turn. And if they don't want to do that, they're going to have to either give you up blockers or give you up cards, which are really unfavorable for them in the long run. Even running things like Vista is a huge problem for Law, and overall, it just feels like a bad matchup. And then we have Magellan. This doesn't surprise me a lot either, because Magellan is just so good at applying so much pressure on the board. If you could get those 5 cost Magellans out, the game is like so difficult, especially for Strawbeard, right? Because they want to play that 9 cost Whitebeard on curve, and if you're able to disrupt them with like 2 5 cost Magellans to get it out like a turn later, it actually completely negates their Whitebeard, right? Because they're not going to be able to play it on curve, which means that they're going to be at like 1 or even lower life because, you know, as Magellan, you're swinging for 6k every time you go Dawn minus 1, which is very often. And then like if you're able to get that double Magellan on curve, it's just a done deal. They've lost their win condition. They can't play nine cost. They don't even like to clear your board in most cases because it's just going to set them behind even further. So you just get free 6k swings at least with these Magellans. And it's just an amazing matchup for Magellan in all honesty. And then another matchup that surprised me was its Doflamingo matchup. So this one was a little bit odd to me because... I play a lot of Doflamingo at locals, and whenever I play against Whitebeard players, whether it's Moby Dick or Strawbeard, I feel like this matchup is either 50-50 or above average or favored. I don't really understand why Whitebeard is favored. Maybe there's too much rushdown or they're too good at controlling the board. But in my opinion, Doflamingo is like one of the best leaders for dealing with both versions of Whitebeard because you could sw you're swinging for at least 7k, you could swing for even 8k for one more Dawn, you're developing something on board for free, and it's really hard for them to deal with that, especially if you're summoning things like Gecko Moria or things with 5 attack because they can't ignore your board, they have to swing at your board eventually, which takes pressure off of your life, and you could just keep recurring these cards. So. In my opinion, I don't really understand where this matchup comes from, but if you guys want to let me know in the comments, please enlighten me, because I'm really racking my brain about why this matchup is so favored for Whitebeard. Alright, so now we're going to get into Kinemon, which is our second meta deck of the format. I'm not going to talk about the Whitebeard matchup because we already talked about it before, so let's talk about the Kinemon versus Zoro matchup. This is kind of expected in my opinion. You know, Kinemon has a 54% win rate against it, so it's pretty favored against Zoro. And this makes so much sense, right? Because Green's whole thing is they're going to rest your cards and swing at your board. And because Zoro runs so many cheap and low-cost attackers, like, it's going to be very easy for Kinemon to just control the board throughout the whole game. Zoro pretty much has to solely rely on the 9-cost turn, which... That might not even work because Kinemon has access to Odin, which is an insane card. So if you're keeping up with life, if you're controlling the board, you know, the Kinemon matchup is going to be the one for you if you hate Zoro. And I feel like I don't have to spend as much time on this because we've already seen a lot of data on, you know, how green deals with Zoro. So I'm not going to spend too much time on the Smoker matchups because I feel like Smoker in general is just 
overall pretty disappointing to be honest. And that's because we're seeing less and less 8 drop kid, so green is just not susceptible to the pops anymore because even if you get rid of the Odin, like an Okiku's dropping down, something is happening to your board anyway, and you can't keep popping things on Kinemon's board because again, Smoker has almost no card advantage to their name. They only really have the Kuzan and, you know, the Meteor Volcano triggers to draw them cards. And then this is really detrimental, especially into Kinemon that is going to draw so many cards throughout the game and they just get so much value off of things like Rizo and Killer. The fact that you have to spend two cards at least to deal with most of their stuff with like a Kobe and a Sakazuki is really detrimental. And then also the fact that they can drop Odin the turn before you can drop Tenkos Kuzan is also just a huge bummer because you're going to be using all of these cards to remove their board. You're going to have less cards to counter it with, with your life. And then a matchup that I don't really need to spend that much time on again because I feel like this is a matchup we saw in OP1 where Law is going to win against Kinemon and Kid because it's just so difficult to control their board as well as just it's very difficult to keep up with them in terms of card advantage because you know you may have card advantage in the form of like Momonosuke and Bonnie and then maybe like a Rizo if they let it up but Law just has so many outs to everything that you play. It's just a very difficult matchup to play against. And then I think to no one's surprise, Kinemon is gonna have a very favorable matchup against Magellan. This is just because Kinemon is just infinitely better at controlling the board than Magellan is. And if it's a fight for the board, green is almost always gonna win if you don't have that big you know, boss monster. And then even if you end up like hitting your Magellans, it doesn't necessarily matter to them because once the Odin is out, your board is just done if you don't have something like a bullet. So relying on something like bullet is going to be a lot more difficult for Magellan players to deal with because their whole game plan is you want to go wide with this really awkward board that they don't want to swing at because, you know, you have things like the Minikawalas uh, that are blocking for you and giving you Dawn. And then you have things like Magellan, which they don't want to go Dawn. They don't want to go Dawn minus two, right? But I feel like Magellan in general, just you can't keep up with the amount of board control that Kinemon has, as well as just all of the card advantage they get throughout the game. Especially if they're starting out with an Okiku turn one, you can't even play like Sadie combo with the Minotaur or the Minikawala because you're just going to lose cards doing that. And then, of course, we have Kinemon versus Doflamingo. I feel like this one is also a little bit self-explanatory. To me, again, it kind of baffles me, but it does make sense uh, if you don't draw into things like Doflamingo or Mihawk. It can be very difficult to keep up with Kinemon, especially if you're not drawing into like the right blockers. Because once that Odin hits, if you haven't dealt enough damage, like you are going to lose the game. You're pretty much racing them down to the clock, praying they don't run 8 costs, because once that Odin hits, it, the game gets so much harder and then the game is going to get even more hard if they do run like one or two of the eight cost kid like what we're seeing because doflamingo is rising in popularity i definitely have seen more and more green lists run at least like one of the eight cost kid and then moving on to the deck that performed the best at this tournament we're going to be looking at zoro We've already gone into what the Whitebeard and Kinemon matchup looks like for this deck, so we're going to skip over that and just move right into the Smoker matchup. And this matchup is one of the most absolutely brutal matchups we have ever seen in this game. It's just so hard for Smoker to keep up with Zoro because they just build this huge, huge board where like even if you successfully clear it, guess what? They're just going to do it all again. And your KO effects don't even matter because they take too many cards out of your hand to deal with. When Zoro is playing things like Curly to Dawn and Nami, they're replacing their hand. So they're basically giving up nothing to just have this full board to swing out at you. The only thing that Smoker has to deal with Zoro is that if they're able to rush you down, because, you know, they're going to always have something that's like one cost on the board. So as Smoker, you could always swing 7k. But like we're talking about trying to out rush down the rushdown deck. So even that is just very difficult. You have to have the right cards to do it. And Black's whole game plan anyway is controlling the board, which doesn't really matter against Zoro because they're just going to be resummoning all the things that you pop anyway. And then looking at the Law matchup, this makes complete sense to me. Like, honestly, it can go either Zoro or Law's way depending on what their hands look like. Sometimes Zoro will just steamroll Law, especially if they could get something like a Nico Robin to stick on the board. And then on the flip side, if, you know, 
Law has just an insane hand. It's going to be really difficult for Zoro players to deal with it because they could do some like crazy shenanigans where they're just cheating out like, you know, blocker Law into structure deck Zoro or Zoro. They could even do some crazy shenanigans of like picking up a Vista after they've played it and just popping multiple things on your board. It could get really crazy for the Law depending on their hand. I feel like this is another matchup where Zoro just kind of has to lean on the 9 cost sometimes if they don't have the Robin stick or they can't, you know, stick a lot of aggression on the board. Especially if the Law player has like, you know, even a subpar hand. So that could, you know, really kind of mess with the game a little bit because Law is also a deck that can keep up with Zoro in terms of aggression on the board. And then of course, we have the Magellan matchup for Zoro. This makes so much sense to me that this is unfavored for Zoro because Magellan just has so many tools that messes with everything that Zoro wants to do. Magellan could also swarm the board, but with bigger bodies, right? Because if you go like Hannibal into Sadie that plays like a Minikoala or a Minotaur, and then you play Magellan, that is an insane curve that is definitely possible to hit. And it's going to be way harder for Zoro to take advantage of the fact they go wide because you also go wide as Magellan and you have things like Douglas Bullet to deal with their cards and you have things like, you know, Magellan to even mess with their 9 cost Whitebeard turn. I think that is extremely important. Like if the Magellan is going second and the Zoro is going first, that Whitebeard could potentially be coming out a turn later, which it might be too late for the red player because they're going to have to either counter a lot of their cards from their hand or they're just going to be eating a lot of life. So all in all, I think this matchup makes complete sense. Magellan's two sides that are just like very strong are things that Zoro hates dealing with. And then another matchup that really surprised me is Zoro into Doflamingo. Again, in my mind, this matchup is very Doflamingo favored because you pretty much do the exact same thing Zoro does where you are building this big board and you're trying to go wide, but except that you're able to swing at his face and keep up with him in terms of aggression, as well as just develop this big board that is not full of like 2Ks and 3Ks, but like 5Ks, even 6K attackers. And especially with the introduction of, you know, Treasure Cup Jinbei into these decks, it could be really difficult for Zoro to go wide because when you're playing Zoro, I think the game plan for when you're playing against Doflamingo is to just swing at their board and try to go completely wide. But that's going to be really difficult if they have something like a Jinbei out. So it's, again, not a matchup that really makes sense in my head. And especially since at locals, you know, I don't really personally struggle with this matchup as much. But again, maybe that's just like my narrow minded view set. Let me know in the comments for this down below. And then the last leader we're going to talk about on this chart is going to be Law. I'm going to be posting a part two where we're going to be talking about, you know, Smoker, Magellan, Doflamingo, and then even things like Ivankov and some other leaders that were less popular. But in the sake of, you know, my sleep schedule and also this is already, you know, kind of a long video with a lot of info. Uh, I'm going to be doing this in two parts. So let's get into the law matchups and we're going to just very quickly go over the matchups we've already go gone over. But against Whitebeard, you're going to be unfavored just because it's going to be harder to swing into a 6k leader as well as they just build this huge board that can be very overwhelming for you, especially at 4 life. Against Kinemon, you are favored because you're pretty much running a lot of the exact same advantages that Kinemon has, except that you're also running the great red removal cards and aggression cards, and you just have a lot more finesse with the deck overall. Against Zoro, it is almost a straight up 50-50 just because it's very dependent on what you two draw and dependent on, you know, the curves and how your cards interact with each other, but they're around even because you have the same amount of aggression in the early and mid game. And then moving on to Smoker, which is a matchup that we have not talked about yet. This is actually one of Smoker's better matchups, and it's still an unfavorable matchup for it. Law is going to squeak by with a 52% win rate against this deck, and I think the main reason why is because, again, Smoker just doesn't have like an infinite amount of removal, and even if you find your removal cards, like your Meteor Volcanoes and your Kobe's, it's taking a lot of cards out of your hand, and you're eventually just going to peter out, where Law is going to keep gaining advantage throughout the game when they're drawing things like Bonnie and Nami's and restanding them or sorry like picking them back up and it's just going to be very difficult for smoker to keep up and then on top of that law is just one of the most aggressive decks in the format you could you know play rush zoro and then shambles play rush zoro again you could do a lot of restand shenanigans it's just a really really strong deck and smoker really struggles against those aggressive decks 
I think Smoker is going to be winning those games where they do draw into a lot of removal. And then, you know, like maybe Locke cannot build the board in the early to mid game to the point where Smoker is just like, you know, has full board control, right? If you do run into those Meteor Volcanoes and those Kobe's and the Law player doesn't have the resources to deal with your board, you could definitely just run away with that game. And then another matchup that kind of makes sense in my head Law is going to be very, very favorable against Magellan with a 66.7% win rate. This makes a lot of sense to me because Law, again, has a lot of the strengths that Kinemon does where they have really good board control options, really good you know, blockers and everything like that, but they had the added effect of just having a lot of restand abilities, a lot of reds aggression in early game, as well as just an insane amount of card advantage throughout the game that Magellan just can't keep up with. Magellan players are going to have to rely on, you know, the big eight cost bullets and just these big plays to deal with law, which not a lot of them are running. Your game plan to go wide as Magellan might not work out because of all of like the restand effects and all of the card advantage that Law is going to gain throughout the game. And then the last matchup we're going to talk about is Law into Doflamingo. This one kind of makes sense to me because, you know, if Law is swinging at you for 5k, you're going to be giving up a lot of cards in your hand to deal with that. But I also don't think it should be this favored. I think it should be closer to like 55% win rate for Law because Doflamingo has a lot of good tools to deal with the board of Law players, right? Because you're swinging 7k at their life, which, you know, demands an answer since they're at four life. And then also you're developing something on board and it could be very difficult for Law to take back that board, especially if you have things like nine cost Mihawk. Um, it's just, it could be very difficult depending on what the Law player can draw into. But again, I get it. Law players have extreme finesse, especially at the regional level. So it might just be that like the card advantage is too much for Doflamingo players to deal with. There might also be a lot of newer Dofi players that are kind of getting into the deck because of its recent popularity. That is something also that I'm thinking about where, you know, these matchups that I feel like they should be winning, they aren't. Uh, that might be an explanation of why. But let me know what you guys think. Part two is coming out tomorrow where we're going to be looking at leaders that are kind of outside the meta like Smoker, Magellan, and Doflamingo. And then also looking into things like, you know, Kaido and Ivankov and all the other decks that were played in this regional. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching my content. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And good luck for whatever you're doing, whether that's, you know, work, school, whatever. And especially if you're going to be participating in the Treasure Cups this month. Good luck, and I'll see you on the next one.